On your whiteboard, you should be writing out, how does a neuron fire? Okay, turn to the person near you, share your exam, uh, share your order, figure out if it's right or wrong. I'm going to call on you, you better be right, go. Check it. Five, four, three, two, one. Who can tell me how does a neuron fire? Let's hear it. James, tell me how a neuron fires. Hold it up, show it. Then it goes into the what? All right, pass it to someone else. Make them do it. Doesn't matter. They're not going to ask for it. Just pass it to someone. So you have the synapse and the dendrite, and then the soma and the cytosome is the nucleus, and then you have the axon, and then surrounding the axon is the myelin sheet, and then you have axon terminal, terminal buddy, synapse. There you go. Toss it to one other person. Let's go. Okay. You have the synapse and the dendrites, then to the soma, then inside the nucleus, then to the myelin sheet, then to the nope. Or then to the nucleus, to the axon, to the myelin sheet, then to the axon terminal, and to the terminal box. There you go. All right, on your whiteboard, put a star, don't erase. Put a star next to where sodium ions occur. Where sodium ions, put a star next to it. Don't erase it, put a star. No. Uh, you're getting too fancy for me. Dumb it down for AP Psych, you're not AP Bio. If you're an AP Bio, dumb it down to AP Psych. What is it? Matt? Axon is where we have it. On your whiteboard, the positive charge to negative charge goes to what? What type of element is going making a positive charge negative charge? Oh, I didn't want to do that. I asked that question too early. It's fine. Race it. Race your boards. I didn't mean to do that. Good. What is it? I got one. What type of, uh, what type of element is creating the charge? Thumb it down, girl. Thumb it down. What is it, Noah? Sodium ion. I don't know what NA stands for. It's not my life. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is it called when a neuron is waiting to fire? I'm trying to see what you know. We'll get into that. If you don't know this stuff, it's annoying, but I can deal with it. Oh, we we're all over the place on that one. Okay. Clearly, I'm going over that in a second. On your whiteboard, please tell me what actually releases neurotransmitters into the synapse. What actually releases neurotransmitters? You better know this answer. Good. What is it? Macy. Terminal buttons. On your whiteboard, please tell me what are three neurotransmitters? Have you started your book? Yeah. Okay. You haven't gone to bio, I see yet. Come on, let's go. What is it, Hannah? There you go. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of uh, what is two thing. Uh, what is the two things a nucleus can do? What is the two things a nucleus can and can uh, can do? Good, I got one. I got two. Okay, open up your binders, take out your neurons. Let's go. What can they do, Matt? What are the two things? They can send the signal or not. There you go. All right, so take out your neuron. Okay, so all of this you should know. We did the do now yesterday. This should be done. Flip it over. This is where you guys have problems. Okay, if you have your neuron, flip it out over. This is where all this information is. There's no point doing it twice. We've already gone through this content. You should know, be familiar with this content. We're reviewing for a purpose. Okay, if I cover it, you need to know it. So, okay, 
Here is our axon. When it's in resting potential, which means it's not firing, it's literally waiting, it's negatively charged. Okay? So, resting potential is when the neuron is ready to fire, but is not firing. It's literally like, yes, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. Fires. Resting potential. It is negatively charged in its sodium. Action potential is when it's switching between positive and negative. Ms. Bennett. She's not here. No problem. Um, action potential is when the neuron is shifting. So if you look over to your side over here, okay, so this is resting potential. It's all negative on the outside, a negative inside, positive on the outside. As the neural message is coming through, the negative flips out, the inside becomes positive. This whole process is called action potential. It's after a neuron fires, the action potential is actually following behind. It's resetting itself to go back to resting potential. It cannot fire until the neuron is completely <laughs> negative again. If it has a positive charge here, it cannot fire. Only when it's completely clear can it fire again. Once it's completely clear, it's resting potential. In the process of firing and moving its ions in and out, it's action potential. Now, the three terms you need to, uh, four terms you need to know when we talk about neurons and action potential and all this stuff, sodium, resting potential, action potential, and all or nothing. A neuron cannot fire a partial message. It either fires or doesn't fire. Okay? If you have your neuron, this is the hardest part of your neuron components if you don't know, which you do. Okay? Now... How to study for your test on Friday. Someone asked me, well, Miss Ben, are you going to look over the test and ask us questions? No. I've already made the test. I cut up three AP psych exams, and I just started cutting them and put them down. Okay? Made the answer key. It's done. <coughs> I'm not going through the test and making sure I cover all the content on the test. I'm giving you a cross-section of possible options. You are getting your studying from your Barron's book, which doesn't have everything. It has a good cross-section of a lot of stuff. It doesn't have everything. You need to be looking at your focuses and your study guides. So if we are looking at the weeks one through five, guess what you should be looking at? Your focus and your study guide from one through five, all that content's going to be there. Please understand what you are doing and what you have been doing all year are to prepare you for this exam. There is no reason not to go back through your stuff and look at it. To, in class, you should have your supplies, so when I reference it, you can just pull it out. There is no point me rewriting this whole thing, because we've already done it. You need to be refreshed, and that's why we have five weeks of review. A lot of you got rocked yesterday in the FRQ, not being able to recall something quickly, correct? However, once we went over it, you remembered, yes? That's what the whole point of review is. Be prepared. On your whiteboard, here we go. Okay, I covered it, which means I'm expecting you to know it. What type of uh, what type of charge does a resting potential have? What type of charge does a resting potential have? What type of charge? Smith. Negative. Negative. On your whiteboard, please tell me what type of element is going in and out of of an axon. What is it, Bella? Sodium. On your whiteboard, please tell me when action potential is happening, what are the ions? What charge is the ions? When action potential is happening, what is the charge? Good. Annie, positive. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is it called when a neuron has to send or not send? Noah, all or, all or nothing, okay? I've taught it, we went over it, you need to know it. All right, so I haven't gone over this, but I'm going to ask you some questions. So if you get it wrong here, not thrilled, but it's fine. <coughs> On your whiteboard, what are the two major sections of the nervous system? What are your two major components? Good. All right, this is our maybe first universal. All right, nope. 
All right, what are they, James? Peripheral and central. What are the two parts of your central nervous system? Come on, come on, come on. What are your two parts of your central nervous system? Come on, think about it. Good. What is it, Mary Kate? Brain and spinal cord, okay? The peripheral nervous section breaks <laughs> into two sections immediately. What are those two? Let's see what you got. Okay, this is also your bonus question. Some of us are still struggling with it. What is it, Bella? Okay, all right, here we go. You should have this. I charted it all out. This is week four content that I did this for you. Okay, so when we talk about the nervous system, the first thing we do is break it into the central and the peripheral nervous system. Okay, focusing solely on the central nervous system, you have the brain, which is made up of interneurons. What are interneurons? Who can tell me what are interneurons? Madison. Think about it. The brain is made up of like, interneurons. It like <coughs> takes in messages from the peripheral and then it switches it so that it can be sent. Okay, out. it's like processing. Yeah. Interneurons are the ones like doing the actual thinking process. Okay? Your spinal cord is actually doing what? What is the spinal cord's role in the central nervous system, Matt? It's a superhighway. It's a superhighway, absolutely. Everything hits the spinal cord and goes straight to the brain except for one thing. What one thing immediately gets a response from the spinal cord? It's the only thing. Macy. Reflexes. 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 Remember, we sat over here. You would hit your knee. All of a sudden, your knee immediately moves. It's because it hits your lower vertebrae and sends a response to move immediately. That is the only thing that the spinal cord actually does entirely on its own. Everything else is a super highway to the brain. It is made up of two major neurons. <laughs> what two neurons use the spinal cord? Nick. Afferent and afferent. Afferent do what, Nick? Okay, how can you remember the difference between afferent and efferent? What was the little phrase we used to describe afferent and efferent, Noah? A before E. A before E. So how does that work? So which one sends the message to the brain? Then it comes down from the brain with the... There you go. The example I used in class, if I kick Bella in the shins, okay, it's an afferent message that goes all the way up to her brain. Once in her brain, an efferent message goes to her hand, and she punches me in the face. So remember that example? Yes? Afferent and efferent. Those are the two that are on your spinal cord. Some going up, some going down. Questions about your central... Okay, so your peripheral is everything not brain and spinal cord. Your fingers, your toes, your legs, uh, everything else is part of your peripheral. Your peripheral breaks into two major sections right away. The first one is autonomic, the second one is somatic. So uh, your autonomic is everything you don't think about. Mary Kate, what is something you don't think about? Writing wouldn't work. Because you have to think about the words and stuff like that. Writing wouldn't work, but the first one would. Oh, no, no, no. Simplify, simplify, simplify. What is something we don't think about, Sophia? Digesting. Digesting your food, okay? I had a salad for lunch. It was disappointing. I'm not sitting here saying, digest, digest, digest. No, I'm just thinking about how disappointing it was and how much better a cheeseburger would have been. Okay? So, digestion would be an example. Nick, give me something else. Heartbeat. I'm not saying pump. Pump, pump. Okay, give me something else. What do you got? Blinking. Blinking. Yeah, yeah, that would fit. Kind of an obscure one, but yeah, that's true. Uh, give me something else. Annie. Breathing. Breathing, absolutely. Autonomic looks just like the word what? <laughs> automatic. So, autonomic means done without thinking. Somatic nervous system is all the things that you do on purpose. Writing is one. Driving is one. Walking is one. Now, hopefully you don't sit there every single day saying, all right, left foot, move. Yeah, yes. Right foot, move. But the idea of going from one place to another is something you actually have to think about, correct? I don't know about you, but when I'm lying on the couch and I really want water, it like takes like a whole like amount of motivation to get there. That means I have to make that decision to do it. I have to be aware of it. Somatic. Do we understand the difference between the two? Okay. 
Underneath autonomic, so things we don't, uh, things we think about, we have parasympathetic and sympathetic. I get these confused. I hate them, <coughs> which is why I'm pretty sure you guys, I'm not so strong on this, which is why I always hit it, because I'm not great at it. Under the autonomic, so things you don't think of, you have the parasympathetic and the sympathetic. Parasympathetic is all the stuff that kind of calms you down, okay? It tries to lower your blood pressure and all that stuff. The reason why I get confused is when I think of sympathetic, I think of calming, soothing, right? And that's what triggers my confusion. Your sympathetic is what's stressful. It excites the body. So when we're doing fight or flight, which one is activated? Sympathetic. sympathetic. When we're recovering, it's your parasympathetic. So if we're going over gas, okay, which one, remember how you get anxious? Okay, then you have the alarm stage, yes, and then you have the recovery stage, yes, okay. Which one is the alarm stage? Sympathetic. Sympathetic. Which one is the recovery stage? Parasympathetic. Parasympathetic, okay. So that is one of your weaknesses, and I will take that champion. I will champion that cause. There you go. A little morpheme action. Sounds good. Yes. That, yeah, there you go. Okay, so... <laughs> That's your nervous system. If you have a nervous system cheat sheet in front of you, flip it over. I just went over it. You're accountable for it. On your whiteboard, please tell me what are the two parts of my central nervous system? Good. What do we got, James? Brain and spinal cord. Brain and spinal cord. What type of neurons are in your brain? What type of neurons are in your brain, Eva? Interneurons. Interneurons. Those are the ones that the majority of there. Now, of course, you do receive afferent and afferent neurons in your brain, but the majority of the neurons in your brain are? Interneurons. Interneurons. On your whiteboard, please tell me, uh, I have a message coming from my shin that I've just been kicked. What type of neurons? What type of neurons? Hannah? Afferent. On your whiteboard, please tell me, afferent neurons go to what cortex? Go to what cortex? Don't give me a lobe, give me a cortex. Got to process first. Good, good. Got to be processed first. What is it? Madison. Somatosensory cortex. Why the somatosensory cortex, Madison? Because it's in the parietal lobe, which gets, uh, it controls your body position. Very nice. Okay. Your somatosensory cortex is dealing with all of your sensations from your entire body. So your somatosensory cortex <laughs> is located in what lobe? By the way, this is your do now question. Somatosensory cortex is in what lobe? What is it? Bella? Parietal. Good. On your whiteboard, please tell me. All of your efferent neurons are coming out of what cortex in your brain? Good. Good. Come on, come on, come on. Good. Aren't you getting ahead of me? All right. What is it? Matt? Motor. Motor cortex. Your motor cortex is located in what lobe of your brain? Also, part of your do now, which I've already covered. Good. My man Matt here had both of these answers on his board. What are they, Matt? Where is it going? Frontal. Why is um, your motor cortex in your frontal lobe, Matt? What can, what, when we talk about our frontal lobe, what is the first thing we always kind of think of? When we talk about the frontal lobe, what do we use as a comparison to the area? It's there you go. So what, okay, so how, why do we know that the motor, motor cortex is inside the frontal lobe? Give me an example, and it's perfect. Um, <laughs> what can we do that a monkey can't? Nick, drive a car, text, okay, type, play an instrument. All those <laughs> things require fine motor movement, which means it has to be in our frontal lobe. On your whiteboard, write my peripheral nervous system, top to bottom. That's it. Do not cheat. Write it.
Okay, turn to your neighbor, check it, go. You need to tell them if it's wrong. If they can't figure it out now, that ain't good. Three, two, one. Everyone understands the central and peripheral nervous system? Everyone's good. Good. All right. So what, I do, what I'm going to start quizzing you on now is parts of your brain. So if you don't know it now, give me your best. I'll be only slightly disappointed. I won't be in range. Here we go. On your whiteboard, please tell me, what is the ushigushi part of your brain? <coughs> Makes up your two hemispheres. What is it called? Let's see what you know. AP Bio, coming in hot. AP Chem, all that. All right, what is it? What is it, Nick? Cerebellum. Cerebellum. On your whiteboard, please tell me, what is known as the little brain? Good. Come on, come on, come on. Let's see. Good. What is it? Madison. Madula. I think we can all agree you guys are struggling here, yeah? On your whiteboard, please tell me what is responsible for your endocrine system. Good. What is it, Hannah? Pituitary gland. What is in charge of memory? Okay. No, spelling's wrong. Uh, what do you got? Uh, Valeria. Hippocampus. How'd you remember it? There you go. Okay. I'm looking at this diagram. Pull it out. You should have it if you have your notes. Okay. I hope you see there is great value in what we've already done. Have faith in it. I'm not giving you notes for you to take because we've already gone through it. You need to be refreshed. If you're not prepared for today's class because you don't have your binder stuff, hopefully that changes for tomorrow. Life is better when you're prepared. So, at the top, your cerebral cortex is the upper part of the brain. It's consisting of two hemispheres. That's your cerebral cortex. Your... Uh, um, it's broken. What is the wrinkles of the brain called? What is the wrinkles? Anyone can raise their hand and tell me what it's called. What are the wrinkles called? What do you got, Annie? Corticalization. Why is the brain wrinkled? More surface area. Because the actual surface area of the brain is actually called the what? Cerebrum. Okay. The cerebrum is the actual outer layer of your cerebral cortex. The outer, outer layer. If you flip it over on the other side, we go through it a little closer. The cerebral cortex is all of the top part of the brain, all the ushy gushy stuff. The cerebrum is the outer layer of the brain where the corticalization is happening. The corticalization, uh, the cerebrum has a nickname. What's the nickname of the piece? What is the nickname of it? Your elementary school teachers used to say it to you. Put on your thinking caps. Why? They're actually anatomically correct. Why is it called the thinking cap? Come on. Is that where like, the neurons fire? Yes, you're, and there's high, more highly dense inner neurons on your cerebrum uh, located on your cerebral cortex. Okay? Next is your thalamus. Your thalamus is located directly above your spinal cord, okay? This is the call center of the brain. All of the information from your spinal cord is coming from your thalamus, okay? The information comes up. So the thalamus receives what type of neurons? You can raise your hand and tell me what type of neurons are coming through. Noah? Afferent. It then sends 90% of them to what cortex? What cortex is receiving it, Noah? The information is coming up, goes to the thalamus. The thalamus sends that information to where? Somatosensory. Why somatosensory? Boom, perfect. Goes to somatosensory cortex, then it goes to the motor cortex and goes back down. So your thalamus is the one directing all the information of where it's supposed to go. 
most of the information is going to your somatosensory cortex. Makes sense, correct? Okay. So then you have your hypothalamus, which is located above the thalamus. It's responsible for your sleep, hunger, thirst, sex. This is what Freud thinks is the most important component of your personality. Why would he say that about the hypothalamus? Why, Macy? Animal instincts is the biggest thing. So if you have an enlarged hypothalamus, you're probably going to be more aggressive. If you have a smaller hypothalamus, you're probably going to be incredibly passive. Okay? Doesn't necessarily dictate, but those are the types of things that AP would ask. Next one is your hippocampus. Okay? Long-term memories. If hippo came to campus, you'd remember. Okay? Then you have your pituitary gland. Your pituitary gland, that question a lot of you got wrong, is in charge of your endocrine system. You can raise your hand and tell me what the endocrine system is. Come on, come on, come on, come on. James. Hormones, absolutely. Okay? Now, um, when we talk about the pituitary gland, apparently in AP Bio it's not exclusively in charge. The hypothalamus helps regulate the pituitary gland. Is that true, Hannah? I don't know. That's what, sort of. A little bit. AP Psych, we keep it simple, stupid, just like with the sodium. Apparently, uh, potassium comes in and out, too. I, yeah, no, we don't need any of that. Yeah. AP Psych, all they care about is pituitary gland. Keep in mind, when you're sitting for my exam, it's dumb biology. Like, if I can do it, it has to be the dumb level of biology. Does that make sense? Very simple, very straightforward. Pituitary gland, AP Psych deems is entirely responsible for the endocrine system, okay? So, um, then you have your spinal cord and brainstem. At the very bottom, you have, of course, your brainstem, then it hits your medulla. Your medulla is all of your autonomic functioning, your breathing, your heart rate, and all that stuff, okay? Then you have your pons, which is dealing with your left and right <coughs> coordination. If you can go like that, thank you, pons. If you go like this, your pons is wrong. Okay, then you have, of course, your um, cerebellum right back here, which is known as the little brain. It is dealing with your fine motor movements. Who can raise your hand and give me an example of a fine motor movement? What do you got? What? Writing is. That's a fine motor movement. Believe me, I have kids who struggle with it. People who, there are kids who are, I have a kid in my, uh, who's a sophomore and has just horrific handwriting. And he, like, literally cannot write better because he doesn't have strong motor movements. <coughs> Every single one of us can do some things. Like, I don't have great motor movements in, like, my hands. Like, I can't play an instrument. I can't control that fine. But I can play soccer, and I was really good. My feet are really good. Everyone has a strength and weakness. Fine motor movements. Give me another one. Hannah. Typing. Typing. Absolutely. Who here is a terrible typist? Oh, my God. That's so sad. That's so sad. I even took a typing class. Yeah, you couldn't do it? I can't do it either. My, it's awful. Okay, so those are all fine motor movements. Okay, then you have the corpus callosum. The corpus callosum is a thick band of neurons that connect the left and right hemispheres. This is a prime, we learned this from what experiment? What experiment do we talk about it? And what do we call it? You're completely right. Don't do this to me. What is the famous experiment where the corpus callosum gets severed? Oh, my God, brain. people. Split brain, yes. What's the guy's name? Do you remember? Joe. Joe, who had the awesome sweater. Yeah. Okay, who can tell me what happened to my man Joe? Hey, Smith. When they showed um, the picture on his left side, where, like, if they showed him a picture, he could say, he could write it with his right side. He could write it with his right hand, but then if they showed him a picture... On the right side, he couldn't, couldn't verbalize it. Yeah. Okay, so we'll get to that in a second. So we're going to come back to that, okay? So everyone understands what I just covered, yes? All right, put it away. Let's see what you got. Put it away. Cover it up. This is the hard stuff. You're talking about biology. I think this is the hardest stuff. Uh, next, maybe the neurons. Here we go. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is responsible for your... Um, hunger, thirst, sex. Freud thinks this is the most important part of your brain. 
Make sure you watch on your spelling, and I only say this about brain parts because you know I'm not the strongest speller, but you need to make sure your Y's aren't I's and your I's aren't Y's. What do we got? <laughs> Nick, hypothalamus. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is in charge. So it's going to send information from this piece to the somatosensory cortex. About 90% of it goes to the somatosensory cortex. Let me see what you got. What do we got? I want to see the boards. Let's go. No. What is it? It's part of this system. What is it? Valeria. Thalamus. Thalamus. On your whiteboard, what is the nickname for the thalamus? <coughs> come on, come on, come on. Let's go. What is it? Uh, James. Uh, well, Hannah. Call center. Call center. It receives all the information coming up from your spinal cord and sends it to where it belongs. Okay, just like when you call a major company, you get to talk to a receptionist, then they send the information to where it needs to be. It's the call center of the brain. On your whiteboard, please tell me what connects the left and right hemispheres. What connects left and right hemispheres? Guys, come on, come on. What is it? Sophia? Corpus callosum. What is the name of the famous experiment where we cut the corpus callosum? Nick, split brain on your whiteboard. Please tell me what is uh, controls all of your fine motor movements. It's known as your little brain. Good. Make sure you're watching your spelling. What is it? Macy, cerebellum on your whiteboard. Please tell me what is known as the thinking cap. Good, good. What is it? Specifically, it's on that, but it's not quite it. What is it, Smith? Cerebrum. Cerebrum is the outer layer of what part of your brain? The cerebrum is the outer layer of what part of your brain? Good. What is it? Madison. Cerebral cortex. What is in charge of your endocrine system? Good, good. What is it, James? Pituitary gland. Pituitary gland. All right. Okay, I'm going to talk. Uh, I'm doing neurotransmitters. So you are okay if you don't know it, but you should. I'm not going to be thrilled if you don't after I go over it. Now, if you have your binder, I cannot insist how nice it is to have your binder. You could just literally flip open. Actually, I don't want to do neurotransmitters. Uh, if you have your brain diagram, I'm taking that out. Um, okay, take it out. Okay, so here is your brain. Okay, let's talk hemispheres, because Smith started talking about hemispheres, and I kind of like, ah. Okay, she did a pretty good job. We just got to get some clarity to it. So, when you're talking about your left and right hemisphere, the corpus callosum is the one that connects the both of them. Okay? This connection is going to allow the two sides to talk. The left side of your brain, what is it in control of? Left side of the brain, who can raise your hand and tell me what is it in control of? What do you got? Bella? Linear. Language, linear, logic. Everything starts with an L that comes from the left hemisphere. Okay? Your right side is majority going to be what? Creativity, okay? Feelings. Okay, melody, spatial awareness, those are, your two, uh, those are your big things from your right. Okay, if it sounds like language, linear, and logic, okay, that is easy to remember. Left, everything else, throw to the right. Okay, so why is language on the left? Why is language on the left? Macy? Because it has um, areas. Very good. No, hey, that's good. Okay, Broca's area does what, Eva? It's your jaw moving. How to remember it? Broken jaw, broca, broken jaw. Okay, what is where Nikki's area doing, Matt? No, damn it, Chris. It comprehends the Comprehends, and how do we remember it? Language comprehension. There you go. Both of those are on the left. Okay, so. 
what happens when, okay, so split brain, okay, so the left side of your brain, um, I don't know why this person has a round head, but we'll solve it, okay, this isn't good, this isn't good, this isn't good, this is, not shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. no, this is your brain, no, <laughs> Okay, so left side of the brain, left, right. Okay, the left side of the brain controls what <coughs> side of the body? Noah. Huh? The right, side. the right side of the brain. Left. Let me try this again. I'm trying to color coordinate this if I can. Okay, so your left side, left side of your brain controls the right side of your body. Okay, so your right side of the brain controls what? The left, side. left side. Okay, so if I stub my toe, my left toe, where is it going to pick it up? Right side of the brain. If I stub my toe on the right side, it's going to the... Okay, that's with a normal brain. If we have split brain, which means they're not communicating, okay, and I see something out of my left eye, okay, my, le my left eye sees something, will I be able to verbalize it? Who can raise their hand and tell me? If I see something out of my left eye, Will I be able to speak about it? James. There you go. If I see something with my right eye, okay, will I be able to say it? Matt, why? Broke his area and your be able to process any of the information that's coming in. <coughs> that only occurs with a split brain. Okay? Everyone gets the basics. Everything's opposite. Okay? All right. Um, okay, quickly about your somatosensory and your motor cortex. Okay, your somatosensory is receiving the information. What type of neuron? Who can raise your hand and tell me what neurons are going in? Madison. Afrin. So the afferent neurons go to your somatosensory <coughs> cortex after leaving what part of your limbic system, Annie? What part of your limbic system sends it to the somatosensory cortex? No, that's a lobe. What part? Pain. Thalamus. Thalamus gets the information from the spinal cord. Remember, it's the call center of the brain. It sends most of the information to the somatosensory cortex. Somatosensory cortex is in what lobe? <coughs> parietal. We know it's the parietal because of what? What does the parietal, what's the only responsibility? It's like body movement. Yeah, absolutely. Now the parietal lobe is right next to the frontal lobe. The frontal lobe has motor movement because if we, if monkeys can do it, okay, it doesn't have to be. If we can do it and monkeys can't, it has to be frontal lobe. Okay, that's why your motor movements have to be controlled by your frontal lobe. They're right next to each other. Why? Noah? Yeah, they're constant communication. Things come up through the somatosensory, go to the mo uh, motor, and go back down. Motor sends only what? Efferent. A before E has to go somatosensory uh, cortex, then it has to go to your motor cortex. Okay? All right. Put it away. Let's see what you got on your whiteboard. Please tell me. I'm going, how much time do I have? Perfect. I'm doing it all. I get to cover anything I want to that I covered today. Here we go. On your whiteboard, please tell me what part of your neuron does resting potential and sodium ions directly affect? What part of your neuron? I want to see every single board every single time. Let's go. Show me what you got. What is it? Smith. Axon. Axon. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the fatty layer around the axon? 
I want everything away. You don't have to put it like away, away, but close everything. I want to see what you retained and what you didn't. You just just close your binders. I just don't want to see any of my stuff up. Good. What do we got? Uh, Valeria. Myelin sheath. On your whiteboard, please tell me what type of ions are going in and out of the axon. What is it? Macy. Sodium. Sodium. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is... Um, where does reuptake occur? No, not technically. Nah, it pulls it from there, but where, where does it actually occur? Smith. Terminal. Terminal buttons is what I wanted. Eh, I didn't cover that one earlier, it's fine. <laughs> On your whiteboard, please tell me, what is the type of neurons your spinal cord deal with? The answer is what? Afferent and efferent. Hi. You are entirely responsible for everything I went over today. It is your job to know it. I have no kindness for being unprepared, especially on things I covered. I would bring your binder with my content from these weeks to class. Would you agree? There is good value there. We've worked hard all year. You might as well benefit from it. Oh, shit. Did I forget to collect it? No. Okay. Oh, I don't care about the prom now. Goodbye. Make sure you put your bind up. Uh, make sure you put your boards back, please. Ah. Nice job.